Welcome to this DIY diary episode where I am pulling the place apart. Yes, it's time. My bedroom got a makeover. In this video, I am going to be tearing down wallpaper and making a mess. A little bit of carpentry as well and we are going to add some detail to this wall. This whole room is going to get a freshen up. Cats are so funny. If you move one thing, I know it actually stresses them out. So I hope Bjorg isn't too stressed out because she does touch wood. She hasn't done it in a couple of months. But when she, when that girl gets stressed, she likes to wee in random places, but she's been good. I am now going to hoover up the cobwebs that have been behind the bed because you know there has been some. And I have gotten my wallpaper stripper, which, it isn't mine. I stole it. So, <laughs> my poor brother, if I'm not stealing his power washer, I'm stealing his wallpaper stripper. How he has a wallpaper stripper, I don't know. So, this wallpaper stripper has been sitting in my shed and it's full of cobwebs, but it's still gonna do the job. Maybe I should hoover this as well. Yeah. I am going to, I'm gonna strip this wallpaper. Now, my regular viewers will know what I'm doing right now. I'm procrastinating because I've moved the furniture out of the way. So I'm like, now I need a rest, a mental rest. I'm hoping this isn't gonna take too long. It's a big wall. It is a big wall. And I also feel like it's the end of an era <laughs> of I being too dramatic. I get too, I get philosophical when I do and how decor change. But that wallpaper has been up for like eight or nine years. Um, yeah, it was one of the first fancy wallpapers I got. There used to be a Laura Ashley shop before they closed down and they always had deadly sales and you could get the rolls of wallpaper for like 25 quid whenever they do like they'd have a sale and then they'd have like a discount on top so i remember getting paid and i think i had to get three rolls of that wallpaper but um there's a slight bit of damage on the bottom because i must have spilled the tea uh probably when i was drunk coming to bed with a cup of tea happens so the plan for this wall now is to add some detail and i am getting a new wallpaper, which is due to arrive in a few days. I'm hoping it comes before I finish this video because I can't pick a paint color until the paper comes. Have a paint color in mind, have to wait for the actual wallpaper uh, to come so I can see if it will blend. And it's also gonna be a nice contrast to the stripe wallpaper that's or not to strip, to the floral wallpaper that's in the nook, because my nook zone, you would have saw that I'd done back in April. Was it April? No, it was February, March. Another thing that I have to do and I'm dreading is this room also hasn't been painted in eight or nine years. It's had the same cotton white color on it. So I'm going a bit warmer. I'm going a bit warmer, as you can see, it's actually a little bit dull today and the lighting in here is amazing because I have the Velux window. So this room can take a bit of color. There's other rooms in my house that don't get as much natural light during winter in the front of the house. So I have to be careful what, with what colors I pick. But up here, 
we can get away with a bit more because I have lovely light. There's my five minutes of pure waffle. I am now gonna stop waffling and start stripping. <laughs> Wallpaper strip. Wallpaper strip. I can hear that it's on, I can feel that it's on. I was concerned that it's been in the shed, I don't know what it is being exposed to. It may not work. But I am not getting any steam. Give it a few more minutes. If not, I will have to, I'm sure I could use my clothes steamer. I really don't want to scrape it and spray the stuff on it and have to do it. I just want an easy life. There is a couple of ways to remove wallpaper. You do not have to use a wallpaper steamer, although they are handy. If you're in the wallpaper section of the DIY shop, you may come across these little scouring tools. It's the little hand tool, or you can do it with a blade yourself. So if you don't have a steamer, you can damage the paper by scoring it. Then with a spray bottle, some people like to use, I think it's fabric softener. You can add that to a bottle or you can just use water and you can spray the wallpaper, come back in 20 minutes, go have a cup of tea, come back and it is going to be easy. Well, when I say easy, you will be able to lift it off. You may have to repeat the process once or twice. Another thing that you'll find in the wallpaper section is you can get a solvent adhesive remover. So you just follow the instructions on the packet, but it's kind of similar. You make up this solution, leave it sit, come back and it will slide off. You can also rent a wallpaper steamer. So I think sometimes I forget about renting a tool. I stole this off my brother. It's been in my shed. So I'm going to use it because it is relatively handy. The only downside to the steamer is you have to be quite careful with it because A, it is very, very hot and there is the risk of lifting plaster underneath. So you kind of have to have a bit of control with it. Okay, I have hit the wall. I'm just over halfway, but I just cleaned everything up and paused. I have tea, although it's probably another coffee I need, not tea. As you can see, I have just removed this big wardrobe and then I have one, two, about three or four strips to take down. But I'm past the halfway point. I'm laughing at this wall as well. I don't know if you can see. It's like tester swatches of paint. I don't remember doing that. And as you can see, good old magnolia. I actually heard someone call it magnolia before. I like a warm, a warm creamy color, but like I have a lovely, um, I have Dimnity by Farrow and Ball on the other side of the room in the nook, but I feel like magnolia is just like yellow toned. This whole room was magnolia. My whole house was magnolia. I'm sure you've heard me say that in the past on this channel. When I first moved into this house, there was a sale on the magnolia. There was like 10 liter tubs of magnolia paint and I bought two of them. And the whole house was painted magnolia. I don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted like a fresh slate because like my house was not a new build, if that makes sense. It was like people had lived here before. So I wanted it like fresh slate. Okay, I'm gonna plug my steamer back in and I'm going to do the last section before the light starts to get dull. Mm. We move. I feel like this is exercise. <laughs> Put my headphones on. I'm like, this is like strength and conditioning class.
Okay, I thought I had made a measuring boo-boo. Yes, Bon. And Miss Puga's over here. If you saw the video that I did in Nanny Siobhan's couple of videos back, I am using the same panelling pack, but I just ordered some extra trim bits to try and make it look a bit more fancy. When I was going to bed last night, I was like, damn it, I'm gonna have to get up early and I'm gonna have to go and get two more panelling packs. But it has worked out. I need to trust my measurements because when I look at things and I look at my measurements, I'm like, nah, I can't be right. Them boxes look too small. They look quite small in the hallway, but now that I've put them against the wall. I got those panel and packs from B&Q. Um, that's where I got Siobhan's one as well. I think there's a two four offer on them. They're quite good value. And I also got these trim pieces. Now these are a bit longer. Bioga's trying to catch the end. We'll panel the wall first. But I do want to add some trim pieces to make it look less of a flat panelled wall, if that makes sense. I may not have enough of the trim pieces because I just ordered a couple of them, but if I want to do every line down the middle with some trim either side of it to make it look fancy and trim on top, yeah, it might not. I don't know, it might not look fancy. Right, now all I have to do is go to the pet shop, get cat food and get caffeinated. <laughs> so it means I don't have to haul boxes of wood trim into the car. So that's a win. A couple of videos back, I was doing a very similar panelling project and I was using the exact same kit and just like in that video, I am going to customise the kit because as you can see, I want to go as high as the angle in this bedroom. So as you can see, this is like a bungalow cottage, slanted wall bedroom and the panelling kit was coming up a bit too short for my liking. So just like in the video where I did Siobhan's panelling, where we did a custom height, I'm gonna do the exact same. I began by putting a bottom piece of panelling on the bottom above the skirt and board, and I made sure that was level. And then I measured the side piece to see how much I needed to cut to add on to the height for each piece going across. I'm using the same tool that I did the last time to cut the pieces of wood. However, I do have a miter saw, but I am after breaking it and I would have gotten a much perfectly straighter cut. But here we are. So I'm using my mini circular saw. I am getting my cuts as straight and perfect as I can because if all of these pieces line up perfectly, that means they're gonna all be the same height when I stick them onto the wall, fingers crossed. And it means there'll be, hopefully, less caulking, my mistakes and gap filling. So I'm taking extra time, cutting all of these pieces, measuring them against each other, getting them as perfect as I can before I start sticking them onto the wall. I was saying in the last video, I was saying in the last video about the adhesive and caulking guns and I tried a different adhesive today just to see if it was also going to be quite hard to squeeze out of the tube. Maybe I just have some weak hands but I ended up taking the long nozzle off it and just squeezing it um, with the no cap on it basically. I found it came out easier but I don't know what, how they are making the adhesive but it just does not squeeze smoothly out of the gun sometimes. So I've done the two side pieces and the bottom pieces they are stuck on. I did them first. So I have just laid out roughly by eye. So I've measured and just positioned. So the gap, so I've got one, two, three, four pieces in the middle. 
So I'll have one, two, three, four, five squares where I definitely won't have enough of that trim, but I can even do one and see how many pieces extra that I need. I have a piece of wood that I'm using as a template. It has the exact measurements to go in between the gaps here. So I've used that as a template instead of trying to measure and mark the wall with pencil. So I've made like a template piece of wood that if I place at the bottom, line up this piece, it'll be the same all the way along. Now the only thing is, which piece of wood is my template piece? I think it's this piece here that's a bit longer than the standard one. So that's my little hack. So I don't have to keep measuring every time. The hardest part of a project like this is when you have to cut any pieces of wood. Otherwise it is just popping some adhesive onto the back, sticking it onto the wall and using a spirit level to make sure that it is all level nice and straight. For harder panelling projects, I like to mark the wall with pencil, but for something like this, I give it a rough measurement, eyeball it, make sure it looks good, and then whack it on. If it's your first time, do take more time and care doing this. I've done this a couple of times, so I've hit pro level. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But if you scroll back to my older videos, there's a video from last year when I did panelling in the living room, where I did all of the squares and I had, I had the dado rail in the middle and it was a bit more harder to do so for that I marked it out in pencil. Don't be afraid if this is your first time maybe you're feeling a bit nervous to do this to take those extra steps because patience will get it nice and perfect. You don't want to rush something like this especially if it's your first time and don't worry if you do make a mistake because a little bit of caulk and a bit of filler will hide any mistake. Ricky Martin is blaring in my headphones. <laughs> what a blast from, from the past. You know, sometimes I don't know, you know your music suggestion thingy. Like where did I get Ricky Martin from? <laughs> she begs. Okay, this is how I done it. Done it, did it, done it. This is what I did in Schwanz and we left it like that's the panel and pack. I ended up having a bit left over. This could be left here, game over, cock it up, paint it, she done. However, I am being a bougie, as the kids would say. So I want to, I'm not gonna start today because I'm losing the light. You can probably tell that the lighting is going. But, sorry, I'm gonna take this. Anyway, I have these trim pieces that I want to do on the inside. Sorry, I'm looking in the viewfinder. I know that's annoying. So I want to do these extra detail -y trim pieces around. So I have five, one, two, three, four, five. I have five squares that I need to cut, which is miters. I'm not as bad as I used to be with the miters. However, I need to just, I think I want to clean up everything and then this can be done tomorrow. And then I will do the extra bit of detailing because I just think with panelling and with DIY panelling as well, I mean, it can look a bit like just stick it on the wall, done. We can all do that. Let's take it up a notch. And I think that the more little um, detail bits that you add in, I'm gonna see if I don't know if it'll focus on that, it keeps focusing on me. If you want, if you look at all those like expensive places, old houses and like, you know, if you go to like afternoon tea somewhere and it's posh, although I haven't been anywhere posh in a while, but something I've noticed is the paneling. Or if you look at an old chateau, if you're watching things on YouTube, all those country manors have really layered on molding and paneling. Um, I know there is a trend for like, loads of squares on the wall. I've seen that in older houses. But I think if we add in a bit of detail, I think it's gonna take it up a notch and it's gonna look a bit more 
expensive. Expensive. These strips of wood, they're a good length. Don't know what length it is. I'll check my receipt. But they were only like, I think, seven euro each for that extra per square. I don't know how, I'll probably have to use a strip in a bit per square. I might have enough, I don't know. But I also need to clean the wall. It's a few. I need to get some sugar soap. Um, I was using crud cutter, but I do have a little bit left in the wall. So yeah, I'm hoping if we can get some detail done in this video, I'll be happy. And then the wallpaper is almost here. And then I'll make a decision on the paint. Siobhan did text me to say that we have, so if the color I used in Siobhan's house, if that matches my wallpaper, she has, we have some left over because we bought a huge tin. You probably saw it in that video. She actually touched up her stairs as well with it and there's still a good amount of it. So I don't think it'll be enough to do, I mean the room, but it means I can get more of that. Anyway, I'm waffling now. That's where I am. I'm gonna let everything, everything dry and I'm going to clean up, which is my least favorite thing to do. Okay, <laughs> plot twist. I'm supposed to be finishing off my lovely candling and adding detail to it. Instead, I'm sitting here with a lampshade, a cardboard box, and green and blue poster paint. I feel like Neil Buchanan from Art Attack. Who remembers Art Attack? It's so 1990s, I think. I wonder if you get reruns. Anyway, my nephew needs a very last minute earth costume. I don't even have time to do a paper mache one. <laughs> and it's after giving me a curveball because he needs it ASAP. Typical boy, leaving it to the last minute and then looking for a DIY costume. So I'm thinking a circle on the front, a circle on the back, straps, kind of like a sandwich board and painted blue with countries on the front. He kind of, he's obsessed with the solar system and earth and uh, countries and flags and everything. He has a thing in school and he needs this earth costume for tomorrow. So he's going to come around and I'm going to measure him, but I want to get cracking on it beforehand. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the circle, hopefully his little torso, I mean he's age eight. So his torso, I mean, yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're doing now. Okay, I got more context for my nephew's outfit. Now stay with me. He has an astronaut costume. I am loving his creativity. He has an astronaut costume and he needs an earth. Now I didn't want to suggest a moon because I was thinking that an earth would be easier to paint than a moon. All the detail on the moon, I don't know. He also didn't request planets, which I think would have been above my pay grade anyway. So I'm gonna channel my inner Bob Ross. When I had a quick Google of DIY earth costumes, it was very complex paper mache DIY outfits. And I was like, whoa, we do not have time for that. So this simple, earth sandwich board will hopefully go over the astronaut costume that he has in mind i don't know they're having like a dress up school disco or something but this is very on brand for my nephew because he's obsessed with planets at the minute so i'm happy to oblige i also thought it was very clever of myself to work smarter and not harder and i went on to canva to see if i could find an earth map shape of countries and I managed to find one printed on some green paper now it didn't kind of turn out how I wanted it I apologize Australia and New Zealand I think I may have cut one of you guys off but then I found you because you fell on the floor and I stuck you back on so my globe is not to scale and I apologize because there's a million islands have been left out and Ireland looks like a tiny dot but I did use the green paper as a template and then I decided to paint over it in the poster paint so that I don't know <laughs> I, I was losing the will to live at this stage. It would have been much easier to do my air corners and finish my panelling project, but I couldn't let my nephew down. Then I got a bit creative and I thought, what would Barbara do? Happy little clouds. So I decided to add some atmospheric pressure to the earth and I did some clouds. So my nephew, I, I was panicking at this stage because like, oh no, this, well, well he's gonna absolutely hate this. But he thought it was quite good. And his opinion is the only one that matters.
Okay, remember a couple of videos back, I was doing paneling in Siobhan's bedroom and I was saying that she had a brand new bed on the way. Well, it has actually just arrived. It arrived last night and she was saying, cause I texted her and I was like, did your bed come? Cause I'm dying to see it. She got like a beige button back fabric bed, just a frame. And she actually sold her old bed frame and I was like, well done you. So she sold her old bed frame on I think like Facebook marketplace and yeah so her new bed is here I'm just packing up a few little hand tools because I'm gonna assume it may need an allen key or something like that and I'm gonna go around and see I don't have my main camera with me so I'll have to shoot off my phone we're going around to assemble her bed and I'm dying to see it also it's now lashing rain the lighting is awful so it, if the footage looks a bit grainy or grey, that is why. So yes, let's get coffee and go around to Siobhan's and see what this bed's gonna look like. So when I got around to the house, I realized that, oh, this is proper flat back furniture assembly. I don't know why I thought that maybe some of the bed might be assembled. Nope, it was not my lucky day. Thankfully, the instructions were in the first box that I opened. So the bed that she got is a Ottoman style bed. So it has, I had to put the little hydraulic system in it as well. This assembly took me about two and a half, three hours. It was a little bit fiddly, but we got there in the end. I was just really excited to see the fabric headboard up against the paneling that we did. So we got the bed assembled, but I will come back because I was saying how she wants to do some frames. We have to do some styling. So she wants some frames above the paneling and she wants to do a little upcycle to the lockers that she has. And she wants to put on all her nice bedding as well. So we can come back, but I just wanted to give you a little update. This video has run away. It, the wheels have come off. I am not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is adding more detail to the trim upstairs. However, my wallpaper arrived. Um, apologies for not getting my usual footage that I would in Siobhan's. I just forgot my tripod. I didn't bring my camera because I thought, <clears throat> I thought maybe the bed might already be assembled. I've just spent the past three hours assembling the bed. Oh, <laughs> flat pack furniture. Anyway, my wallpaper arrived. Let me grab it. Okay, I was gonna leave you on a cliffhanger, but I don't do that, I don't do that. So, the next video, the next DIY diary, do you like that phrase? I was thinking, because, like, it's when you do weekly YouTube videos, it's hard to do, a, like realistically, a whole room makeover by one person is not gonna be done in three or four days and then I have to edit the video. So I was thinking like, if you call the DIY videos like a DIY diary, it's kind of like you're just documenting the process. I know it's really annoying when you don't see like a room makeover start to finish, but realistically, I, it's just me. It's just me and I upload weekly and yeah. Anyway, here's the wallpaper and the paint colour that I used in Siobhan's is the, it's too clay, it's too dark. But I do have some antique cream. So this is the stripe, so you're gonna have to use your imagination. And I am on a bit of a green buzz at the minute. If you've, no, if you've kind of watched me a long time, the pink I've had in my house has kind of slowly changed to green. Yeah, just over the years. I don't know if it's cause like I love outside in the garden and I feel like I bring it in. I just feel like it's a calm kind of color and it's a nice neutral. Anyway, I got this, it's by Sandberg. It is a bit expensive, it comes from Sweden. Yeah, <laughs> because I had kind of saved money on the paneling and obviously I'm doing it myself, I'm not paying someone. I kind of splashed out in the wallpaper. So let me, can you see that? It has little dots. Can I get closer? Yes. So in my living room, I have antique cream on the wall. And when I just put this against it, I was like, okay, that is a really good match. Now I could be absolutely extra and do green on the bottom paneling, but I'm not gonna do that because I think it is too much. I want just a subtle, excuse me, at the hiccups because I just swallowed my lunch. If I do green on the bottom paneling, um, I, I wouldn't be dreadful, but enough for me. I'm gonna to stick to, I think, cream on the bottom, but that could change. You'll have to wait until the next video. 
So I'm gonna end it there. Sorry for the wheels coming off towards the end, but everyone else needed something and I obliged. So my own work went to the side. In the next video, I will be doing painting, wallpapering, pulling it all together. And yeah, so if you're new, subscribe and it will be the next video. See you later.